What's going on guys, Roma the Roamer here. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a technique that has worked for me, um, a repricing technique, a repricing method that has helped me double my units sold in the past, well, it's been about 35 days now since I started. I'm gonna take you into my computer. I'm gonna show you exactly what uh, has happened with my sales. My sales haven't doubled, but my units sold have doubled. I think my sales are about 1.5x and the really interesting thing is I've actually increased my I've increased my uh, minimum price for books and it's actually remained the same for CDs and DVDs so if if you guys are interested in uh, checking this out I'm not promoting this company at all uh, but I do recommend them I think they're fucking amazing um, excuse my language I'm gonna share this with all my students in the course as well but I'm gonna post this on YouTube for free and the reason why is like I'm gonna share with you all my repricing settings all this and if you guys want to go ahead and just do the same shit I'm doing but the reason why I'm not putting this in the course yet is uh, I've only been doing this for 35 days so like I could be doing some things wrong but I mean I've raised my minimum price and I've doubled the units sold and I mean, I don't know. That just speaks for itself right there. So without further ado, let's dive into my Look, grind hard, well done, sir. And welcome to the freaking well show. And party central to my well ones. A night of violated hell codes. Dope sells like the charge do, but selling's all about potential. Okay, so here we are in my Seller Central account for this one. Uh, I've actually implemented, the cool thing about Channel Max that I also like is you can use it on five accounts total, which is how many Amazon accounts I currently am using. So if you do have multiple accounts or if you wanna share your account with somebody, uh, you can. Um, so, you can see the day where I started. So on, it was actually exactly 35 days ago, um, was the first day I repriced. We sold 300 units. Now when we sold 300 units, I had the minimum price at $8.50, which for me is actually losing money. For you guys, it's probably break even. But for me, it's losing money because I run a consignment business. So for every dollar that comes into my business, 50 cents is paid out to a user. So I've raised my minimum prices to $10. So the first day, and maybe the second day as well, the minimum price was $8.50. And I was like, I don't like getting a lot of sales if I'm actually losing money when I get the sales. So I, I just, temporarily, I was like, let me just raise the price to $10 and see what happens. And I think this is a really interesting thing. What happened, and I don't have like any, other than my own data, I don't have like any compelling uh, data for what I'm about to say, but I, I, I noticed that a lot of items started selling for $10 instead of for $8.50. And you know, I think what happens is the price is always going up and down for items all the time. And with, for books, I'm not paying for these books, I'm just paying for prep, so I am paying a dollar for the book uh, to be prepped. And so like my investment isn't huge. Would I be willing to wait 96 days for it to sell or even double that? Sure, I will. You know, And I'll actually talk about some of the pricing rules that I have. I'm gonna go over this whole system. It's uh, it's kind of complex, but it's not that complex. It's actually really simple, but uh, what holds everything together is, is pretty complex. So like maybe this solution isn't for everyone. Like if you don't have a VA, I probably wouldn't use this software because we update prices every single day here. Anyway, I'll, I'll get into the nuts and bolts of it in a second. But you can see first day we sold 300 units. Uh, that was, is that 15K in sales? Uh, it was only 12. I don't know what the sales were for that day, but 300 units sold. Probably our average sales price is like 10, so probably 3,000. Um, and then I raised the minimum price to $10 for all books, $8.50 for CDs and DVDs, since they don't cost as much in fees. And you can just see, like look before, look at this red line before, and then look at this red line now. That was last month. Can I have it only show? Yeah, I can have it only show last month. So you can see, like this is actually insane. Like this is what my sales were like for the last 30 days. So I was selling about 50, uh, 60 units on this account every day. 
50 to 70 units a day. Now, every day we're selling like over 100 units. So we, we literally doubled our sell through rate. Like 120, like our average is like 130-ish, maybe 135. And it, before it was like 70, you know? So, and then you can see product sales, like we used to be selling 1,200-ish a day. And now we're doing close to 2,000. And I know you guys have been watching, a lot of you guys have been watching my journey with OA. Like, we're not even sending online arbitrage items on this account. Yes, there are some items touching down for OA, so that is probably a little bit of a factor of increasing in sales, but not nothing super crazy. Okay, so let's, uh, let's dive into the pricing strategy. Okay guys, so now I'm inside of Channel Max. You can actually select what Amazon account you want to use. So you can, as you can see, I have all five of my, uh, uh, so as you can see, I have five Amazon accounts here. And uh, it's pretty nice just to be able to view everything at once. Okay, so if you guys want to follow me here, um, if you guys choose to use this software, if you want to test it out, you can uh, actually set up the same exact rules that I have. So all you do is go to settings at the bottom and click on repricing manual. And I highly, highly, highly recommend that you use their online chat. In the bottom right hand corner, they literally respond in like 45 seconds to all messages. So I highly recommend that you guys use, take advantage of this. They've actually inspired me we're now at restrictedinventory.com. We actually have this same chatbot because I was so impressed with their ability just to message us back good answers to all of our questions. We literally have asked them like very complex questions and I've actually hopped on Zoom with them like four or five times. But now I don't even hop on Zoom with them because they're so good at answering questions. And like, you know, a good question to ask that a lot of other softwares won't do for you is how many items are not being repriced right now? You know, maybe I, I, I 56,000 SKUs, actually more than that, I have like 60 something thousand SKUs total. And you know, we find out that a thousand aren't being repriced. Just push by that simple question, we find out why. So that's a great question to ask their chat. Um, but anyway, this first pricing rule I'm about to show you guys is like incredibly simple. And repricing in general is pretty simple, like especially repricing for FBA and, and MF too. Like it's, it's not complicated. Like what we're doing here is, surprise, surprise, we're matching buy box. That's it. We're, it says FBA, but it, uh, I talked to the team and I'm pretty sure that just means buy box. Again, ask them, double check everything I'm saying with them, but 99% sure that FBA means matching buy box and you guys can scroll, you guys can slow down the video. And uh, there is some reasons why we have certain things set up the way they are but if you guys do want to copy my settings feel free um, there is like no software is completely going to be like a hundred percent intuitive for the user I forget why we had to set up like ships later than 10 days but we did and it affects it, it's like really important to do that um, for us at least like the way we set up our settings um, so yeah, anyway, and, and this big shout out to Scott Needham who came to my event in Miami. Miami, we'll be doing the Miami event next year, Taylor Jones and I. So if you guys do want to network with top level Amazon sellers, um, consider coming to our event. You're invited. This is your invite right here, official invite from me. And Scott Needham was at one point like top 10 Amazon sellers. And he's like top 50 now. He does like 70 million a year. And he recommended the software when I texted him. I was like, what software do you recommend that's out there right now? And then I, I actually found a YouTube video of his after he recommended it. And I just watched the YouTube video and a lot of this stuff is inspired by him. So Scott spoke at our event and he, he talked about how he took his pro and I'll actually link the video below. It's a great, great, great video. Uh, Scott calls himself the smartest seller. And usually that would be like, I who the fuck are you to call yourself the smartest seller? That's some arrogant ass shit. Like, you fucking asshole, but this guy's probably the smartest seller out there, like, let's be honest. Like, if you go watch that video and you don't think he's the smartest seller, like, come back. Besides me, like, this dude's the smartest seller out there. So, <laughs> go go watch that video below. It's his it's short little 15 minute talk. I think it was the most valuable talk at Miami 2022. It definitely inspired me, and he was able to take his business from a 14% profit margin 
to an 18% profit margin by this simple rule that I'm about to share with you here. I can literally check out how simple this is. It's crazy. So, if we go to time variant pricing is what it is. So I don't know if this is Eastern time or Pacific time, really not that important, but at nighttime for two hours, we raise our prices. If you guys watch that video below, Scott kind of breaks it down more specifically. I think he might do it for like four hours, but we're doing it from two to four. So we're raising all of our prices to our max price. And in combination of raising my minimum prices, I think it's really valuable. I was watching a video by, if you guys don't know who Jim Pickens is, and you're a bookseller, I highly recommend go watch some of his stuff. Really smart guy. And he recommended, this is like three, four, five, 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 maybe five years ago. He recommended that you should price your minimum, the minimum price for your book should be $9.50. And I remember thinking at the time, like, dude, you're insane. Like, not all books are going to sell for $9.50. Now look at me, my minimum price is $10. But $10 now compared to $9.50 back in the day, like over the last year, the dollar has inflated 7% alone. So like $9.50 back then is probably like $12 today. So um, I thought he was crazy for that, but now I think he's on to something. And after selling, like a lot of this repricing has been inspired by my online arbitrage journey. Like as I'm sending all these, I've sent, well I will send 3,000 SKUs to Amazon if uh, my prep centers will fucking prep my shit. But I've, I have a thousand items that have already been sent to Amazon and I am casting my net wide, just like Scott Needham says, uh, he casts his net wide, doesn't go super deep on one product, and I think that's really smart, just in case ASINs tank, you're protected. But when it's a lot different when you pay for a product, like a lot of money for a product, like I'm paying 30, 40, 50 bucks, sometimes $100 for these products, I wanna make sure that I get my money back as quickly as possible. And so I put a lot of thought into repricing and I'm still like, I'm still changing what I do. Express, uh, I'm going to get into the aggressive repricing in a second, which I think is really important for booksellers. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm assessing the aggressive part of my repricing model right now. Like I think I, may, I might be a little bit too aggressive with uh, some of my online arbitrage items. I think I should be a little bit more patient, especially as a bookseller. Like we'll wait a, like a year for items to sell. But here's the rule. Scott Needham was able to take his profit margins from 14% to 18%. And I think he does like 70 million a year. That's a lot of fucking money. What's 4% times 70 million? Whatever, or whatever his end of day profit was. Like it's, it's a significant amount, okay? Just by pricing up at night. And so what we do is we set $10 as a minimum price for all books. Yeah, and then the max price, I forget exactly what it is, not that important you guys can come up with your own max price the important part is with your max price in my opinion you want it to be actually be realistic you want your max price to actually be a price that the book could potentially sell for so I think our max price is like double low FBA I think we actually have like a system for for lowering the max price over time but it's not outrageous it's like two maybe three X low FBA or maybe even Merchant. I don't think it's Merchant. I think it's FBA. So my point is like, let's say there's a $60 book. FBA price is 60 bucks, okay? So with that rule, we're gonna price it, let's say it's 3X is my rule, we're gonna price the book at 180 bucks. Now if that's a textbook, like what is this rule really doing? And I'm actually gonna go, I'm gonna full send this video. I'm gonna get scientific as fuck and nerdy as hell on you guys. And uh, so I might lose some of you guys here but I talk a lot about this in the past. Um, okay, Amazon only shows you the lowest 20 prime offers, or the lowest 20 offers, period. And so they always show you the lowest FBA offer, but they only show you the lowest 20 offers. So as booksellers, usually there's like 100 plus assholes on each listing. There's 100 people selling books, okay? So if, there, if you're the only FBA offer, and you're priced at 60 bucks, let's say, and everyone else is priced at like 30 MF, and you're the only FBA seller, and it's a high demand book, like let's say it's a high demand textbook, this pricing rule here to raise price to max could be game changer, and this is why. There's some bookseller that commented on Scott's video when he posted it, and the bookseller said, there's actually somebody really uh, in the community, uh, 
he'll probably watch this video, whoever commented on Scott's video, he'll probably watch this video as well someday. If that's you, comment below. But he was like, well, Channel Max isn't that good for booksellers, blah, 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 because it can't see the lowest. It can't see prime offers. Well, no legal bookselling software can see the prime offers, except for New Press, the old version of New Press, which I still recommend. I'll link a video below. If you guys have like less than a thousand in inventory and you, you want to make as much money as possible, I actually recommend using New Price. So I'll link that video below. And make sure when you use New Price to ask for the old version of New Price. Because the old version of New Price allows you to see the lowest five prime offers, which is extremely valuable. But anyway, um, so you cannot see the lowest, you can't see like if you're if you're 60, 60 dollars, and there's a bunch of 30, 40, 50 dollar MFs, and you're the only FBA, it's gonna come back as your FBA one. So your repricer is blind. It doesn't know that there's no other FBA offers above you. So what this rule is doing, every night we're gonna reprice back up to 180 for two hours. So now, so now our price is going from 60 bucks to 180. If we win buy box at 180, we're gonna stay at 180, right? Because the default uh, pricing rule is to compete for buy box. So if we price to our max price, which is pretty aggressive, um, and we stay, we, and we win buy box overnight, then the price is not gonna go back down. So now we're pricing, and 60 is like a big number. So now we're at 180. Now we just raise the buy box to 180, which if you guys sell textbooks, you know that you can sell a textbook for 180 if the low MF is 30. It's completely realistic. And so um, that's not the only circumstance like this. I'm sure there's like scenarios I'm not even thinking of where this rule can help increase your end of day profit margin. Like another example would be if you're competing with a few sellers that also reprice up or at least have some type of conservative repricing rule where it tries to price up at some point. Okay, now if, if you price up, you're actually giving them a chance to price up and maybe they're not gonna go to 180. If you're at 60, they're not gonna come up to 180 with you, but maybe they were sitting at Let's say there was two FBA offers, so it was FBA 1, you're 60, and FBA 2 was 62. So now by you pricing up, maybe you don't win the buy box at 180, but now, even if this guy doesn't have any repricing rules at all, the buy box will probably go to him at 62. So overnight, you just raise the, and then you're going to go back down to 62 the next day, right? And so another scenario would be if, if he does price up. So let's say you go up, you go up to 180. He wins buy box at 62. If he's a smart seller, he's gonna reprice up at some point. And let's say he slowly increases to like 75 in that two hour increment, which if you guys use reprice it, any of these other softwares, they don't reprice that fast. Scott Needham talks about channel match being a repricer that prices fast. Now, admittingly, I don't know how fast this is compared to others, but I know Scott Needham's smart as fuck. And he said that at the time it was like, faster than anything in the market. So it, I know it's like, it's got the standard. I think it's like up there with seller snap and a few, I think it's like a lot faster than Be Cool and a lot of these other pricers. Okay, so um, that's another scenario is like, FBA offer two is 62, you're 61, you price up to 180, The it, it continues, it goes up to 75 and then you drop back down to 75 or, overnight and hopefully you win the buy box again. So just this default rule right here is huge. So I really recommend you guys have that. Uh, we don't have any sales velocity rules for this. Before I dive into uh, the aggressive model, I'm gonna show you guys the floor and ceiling. So if you guys wanna copy these, if you, if you are setting up, feel free. I'll scroll semi-fast, but you guys can slow the video down. A lot of these I don't remember changing, and I'm not gonna dive into why we do that. You can also exclude sellers, so like Jensen Books, maybe you wanna exclude them. I don't know if you can exclude the Amazon Warehouse deals, but there's a lot of, uh, maybe you wanna exclude those guys. Um, okay, so let's get into, I use this aggressive pricing rule. Currently I'm using this for any inventory over 90 days and this is a long video but at the end I will quickly summarize um, 
kind of like how we some back end stuff we use to make all this work. So I, again, I highly recommend you have a VA if you do this method. Um, once you get it going, you're good to go, but uh, there are a few things that need to happen. So Channel Max doesn't know when, and I could be wrong here, but I, I, this is the way we set up our system is Channel Max doesn't know when your inventory is like 90 days old or whatever. So we use the inventory health report to look at all items that are over 90 days old and then we assign it to the aggressive target buy box. And one thing I really like about this rule, I'll scroll down here, is, okay, let's say you're on a listing and your price, I, you see this a lot in the book world, where they like, you scan a book with Scout IQ and it shows like $900 in profit. And people assume two things. The naive people assume they're gonna get rich. <laughs> the optimistic people think they're gonna get rich too. Uh, like me, sometimes I'll scan it. There's a chance, you know, there's a chance it's gonna sell for this much, but most of the time it's not gonna sell for that much. Um, usually in that case, I have a video on my course that breaks this down, so if you are on my course, you can go watch all the Keepa videos, where um, in reality, if you scroll out over the course of like five years, you can see that it used to sell consistently for like 25 bucks or some other price, but when everybody sold out, uh, somebody had a really bad repricer, <laughs> and their price is just sitting at $900. So what this rule would do is it'll combat that. It will actually reprice down until the buy box comes back. So Amazon hides the buy box when the price is outrageously high. Pretty soon I do have to go to drum lessons, so I'm gonna to try to wrap this video up. I'll scroll down for you guys to view any more of this. And let me know if you guys like content like this. I can, I can make more content, you know, some niche type, super, scientific type content, whatever the fuck you want to call this. Like, uh, I spent a lot of time over the last few months thinking about this stuff, but pretty simple rules. Um, so what this aggressive rule does is like we're targeting buy box. I can't even remember, like I wish I would have made this video earlier. Um, basically what this rule does with all the parameters I've set is it lowers and it raises uh, the price until you get the buy box. So it's aggressive in the sense where it tries to sell, but I mean, 90 days old isn't like super old for books. Um, and we also assign any uh, online arbitrage items over uh, 30 days old, which I think we're actually making a mistake doing that. So don't emulate me there. I think we're gonna change our philosophy. I was talking to one of my buddies last night, and he says he's an online arbitrage seller that does a shit ton of sales, and he'll actually wait 90 days before he gets really aggressive, which I found interesting. And I think that actually might be the right thing to do, because prices go up and down all the time uh, for all items, you know? Okay, so these are the rules here, and basically what this is going to do differently. Oh, okay, yeah, we're lowering by 2% with Amazon. Um, this is just really gonna drop the price until we win the buy box. So if we go back to default, we're matching buy box. This is targeting buy box, much more aggressive. Now I have one more rule that I'm not even gonna share with you guys because I, I just think I just fucked up with it. But if you guys look, it says no sales, lower price till sale. And like, you guys can literally look at the keeper graphs that I'm on with these items are all OA items. I'm only repricing OA items. So any OA item over 30 days without a sale, we assign to this. And it's just atrocious what happens. Like like the price just goes straight down. And I think uh, I need to fine tune that. Um, but aggressive target buy box, I think that's the rule where once we set this, we really saw a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff move consistently. So anything over 90 days gets assigned to this. Let's see if there's anything else. Floor, ceiling. I believe this is the same as before. I'll quickly scroll through if you guys want to slow down there. Uh, we're not targeting any sellers currently. Never ignore buy box. We've had yes. Um, yeah, so a lot of this stuff, like I can't even really go into depth because I'm not even sure what a lot of this means, but setting this up, and I highly recommend you do this as well. Like I, I taught, so maybe if you guys really wanna do this, like this is what I recommend, like set up my settings and then uh, get, get Channel Max on Zoom. 
you know, or, or message them and just, just walk through. Just be like, look, I, I just want to show you everything I'm doing and like, let them know your goal. That's what I did. I let them know my goal for everything. We logically thought everything out. And then the thing about this is like, like again, no user interface is gonna be extremely intuitive for the user. And like some things I was like, oh, like I know what I want when, I, when it comes to repricing. But sometimes I look at a repricer and I don't know what they mean by target buy box. Like what does that mean? It, it means it wants to win buy box. So like we are, repricing until we get the buy box, which is pretty aggressive. But with this rule, it'll also price up um, when you win the buy box. So it's aggressive, but it's like, it's also kind of conservative in the sense where it is trying to get you more money once you win the buy box. So overall, um, that's it. I promised that I would tell you guys a little bit about the systems that hold this in place. The main system that, that we do is like, we make sure to upload minimum prices every day. And so with OA, that's really important. I have this spreadsheet that has all my minimum prices. So every day, my team downloads all minimum prices. For books, we just assign $10 as a minimum price for all books. For DVDs and CDs, it's $8.50. And we just upload those every day. That's the main system. Another system we have, at least right, is this isn't gonna be forever, but we just message them every once in a while, having them do it every day. Message Channel Max. They're gonna hate me for making this video. <laughs> I message them every day and be like, hey, is there any items that aren't being repriced? And if they're not, we just find out why. Usually it's because the minimum price isn't assigned yet. We're adding MF items currently. We're doing some backpack sales this year. Uh, I think that's the only MF thing we have right now. So um, I have not fine-tuned my MF pricing system, but it's gonna be similar. It's gonna be like price until we win the buy box, you know, match MF, match low MF price. Like MF pricing is actually easier than FBA pricing because you have more visibility. Okay, that's it for now. Um, hopefully this video is helpful for you guys. Let me know if I can make another video where um, I go into even more detail or answer any questions you have. There are a few more things we do that I'm not currently thinking of, but the min-max price is like the main system that holds all this together. Uh, oh yeah, you, you mean you can upload, you have to upload the SKUs to different pricing strategies. So like we use the FBA report to look at FBA, inventory FBA, inventory health report. We download that and upload it and uh, look at any items that are over 90 days old. Um, we're doing something pretty sneaky too. Um, if you guys see me at Miami 2022 or, or 2023 or a turn the page event, ask me about it. But uh pretty cool thing we're doing i wanted to go <laughs> into depth it's not really important for anyone else um, but it's important for my business my unique business that's it guys much love thanks for tuning in and i'll catch you guys in the next video if you guys have restricted books make sure to use restrictedinventory.com that's my service where i sell your textbooks for you at a 50 50 split net profit you can email me any questions you have we accept pallets of books um, we accept cds dvds um, if you guys want to come to my events, feel free. If you guys want to follow my journey of me learning Spanish, go follow Avery L. Viajero on in, uh, Instagram. I haven't been super active on Instagram because I've been focusing on uh, this new Tinder Bumble hustle I've been doing. I've been, I'm going to start running Tinder and Bumble ads. If you guys haven't watched that video already, I don't know if it's going to go before or after this, but just look up uh, one of my recent videos. I talk about a new business I'm getting into where I'm going to be uh, buying or selling textbooks on consignment for college kids and I'll get their attention through Tinder and Bumble ads. So that's it guys. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Like button. Much love. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you guys in the next video.